Hey everybody, so today we have a repair. If you're lucky enough to be in this business long enough, you're gonna get pieces that come back that need to be fixed, and that's why we make things the way that we do. They're made to be repaired. Uh, this is my mom's old wallet. She carried it for 10 years straight. I made it in, I believe, 2008. And um, I don't know which video is gonna come out first, but we did do a rundown of her leather goods setup, and you've seen the wallet I made to replace this. And the reason she stopped using this was because back then, um, I have a, Total love affair with Riri zippers. They're, in my opinion, the best zippers you can get. But back then, I would just go to Joanne Fabrics and get just a zipper that matched the wallet, sew it in, that was it. Now, I'm not trying to ta trash talk Joanne Fabric zippers here because this thing lasted 10 years in its plastic teeth. So that is not to say if all you can get is Joanne Fabric zippers, do not do leather work. This is, go for it, they'll last. But I figure, um, we might as well, since we have the tools and stuff at our ability, at our fingertips now, we might as well take this out, do the repair, throw a Riri zipper in, the number four, and um, get this going again because she wants to use it every now and again. Um, there are a couple interesting things. So this was made before we had our conchos made. So we have our own conchos with our logo on them. And a funny story about these, you guys have seen these, of course, plenty of times, is that this wallet was made in 2009, I believe, and in 2012, a little baby Hugh from Buckle Guy and a little baby Eric from Quarter got together and made these as our first project together casting. And we're roughly the same age, so we were like two 25 year olds, um, and it replaced using like a buffalo nickel or, because this isn't a real buffalo nickel, this is one of the fake ones. Um, so I asked my mom if she wanted to be if she wanted this to be replaced as well. She said no. She wanted to remain original, and so we're just going to keep this as original as possible, and just switch up the zipper. So let's dive into it and see what we got to work with and how deep of a job this is going to be. Um, I don't think it's going to be that difficult. So realistically, the only thing that broke was the pull on the zipper. The zipper itself is totally fine. Um, however. I want to make some adjustments to the underside of this wallet. So because this was so long ago, there really weren't any pictures to show that this part of the wallet was usually sewn onto this part of the wallet to create a card holder. And not only is that done to have an extra card holder, but it's also done so that when you lift this up, you see how this is happening? You have more, you have more stitching here to keep this held down. So what we're gonna do is, I'm not gonna do that because if you see on the inside there, I don't know how well you can see that, but the stitch pattern is just kind of enough to keep it held in. I'm gonna just toss a couple of small rivets in to keep this from lifting, um, but make it still look original. The good news is, all we have to do is cut in from the side here, and I gotta be very careful not to cut this leather. Now this leather is from Tandy, I believe. I was still using their leather. And the thread is a poly thread. So we have no rip stitches. The only thing we have is a little bit of fading. This is hand dyed purple. I dyed this with uh, Phoebings. And we just have a little bit of fading here which you could easily re-dye. Um, there's no top coat on it. All of this shine is from use. So what I wanna do is, I wanna go in here and cut these stitches. And with a saddle stitch, it's a little bit different because you can't just cut one stitch and they all come undone. So we're going to go in and we're going to very carefully cut enough stitches until we can get a pair of scissors in there, ideally. It's also glued down. Um, I'm just trying not to break the leather. I might have to come in through here, actually. That's better. Okay, so we can see the stitches now. So I'm going to go under with this one, and I'm going to go under, and I'm going to do this. So now, once you get a couple stitches pulled, the easiest way to do this is to actually just pull the stitches out with an awl. Because then you're not risking cutting into the leather where you don't want to. and this should come right off. And the way this wallet is built, we don't have to unstitch any of this. We're only working on this part, and then we'll just sew these back together 
and maybe pop a couple rivets in. I'm going to ask my mom if she wants me to do that or not. And uh, we should be good to go. I don't know what I used for glue, honestly, back in these days. I might have used... All right, so we are going to have a little tear out, but that's okay. We'll just re-glue it. Um, it's not going to hurt the wallet in any way. But when I pull, you will hear a little bit of... Yeah, see, so I just put a little dab of glue right there. I'm going to use my knife to very gently just kind of cut this. Just, I don't want to cut through the leather. That's the only thing I don't want to do. There we go. So that's not too bad for 10 years um, to have a little tiny bit of glue come off. I'm not worried about it. Um, I will say it is a very fun moment when you've been in business long enough that your pieces start coming back in for repair uh, because we build these wallets to be used, repaired, and used again. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy that this one has lasted in such great shape as long as it has. So now that we have this detached, uh, this is the piece we're working on. And we're going to do the same thing. So we're probably just going to put up a, set up a fast motion. i got to take all these stitches out. Even though she's not using it, my mom's old school. She has a penny in every one of her wallets. Never leave a wallet empty. And back in this day, I used to use Elmer's glue. So ungluing this seam is going to be very simple. Um, our next step is to do the exact same thing, but to remove the zipper. So I'm going to cut this out. And I don't think you guys need to watch, you know, 8 million different time lapses of me cutting thread. So I'm just going to get this removed and get this zipper removed and then we can start the rebuilding process of this wallet with the new zipper. So we have all the stitching out now and this should just pull right out. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, I used Elmer's glue back in these days and I am unbelievably surprised at how strong this glue is. <laughs> so Excuse me while I fumble around and try to get pull this out. There we go. And that's it. We are ready to get our new zipper cut, which we are using, again, number four Riri in, uh, I think it's the ivory color, cream. So let's size this up. We're only going to need a little piece. We'll go to about here. And I left a very small seam allowance. This is very, very tight. I usually leave a half inch, so we're not really gonna be cutting many teeth off or anything like that if at all. And I actually think I might have cut that a little too small. That should be sticking right out there. Ooh, we just barely made it. So, um, so we're good on that. And then we have a, I like these zipper pulls. They're just the solid brass ones, unless you're going to do like a leather pull tag. But this wallet is small enough where, especially with the number fours, I like to, I tend to like just the, the plain ones that say Riri on them. And the way you attach them is you just pull this apart. Uh, Buckle Guy has switched to using all double-sided Riri tape, um, unless it says so on the website. So it doesn't really matter what side you put the zipper on, it's going to work just fine. My biggest issue is making it even. You might have to do it a couple times, or you might luck out like that, and you get your tape totally good. Now, if at this point you want to put stoppers on either end, go for it. I tend to just sew it, sew it in so there's no way for it to stop. Um, but next, we are going to use some TED's tape and get this taped in, and then punch our holes, because believe it or not, I did not know what uh, stitching chisels were back in the day. So every single one of these holes is hand pitched, has, was hand punched with this exact scratch ball in this entire wallet. I would punch holes one by one. Um, I think I'm going to try to see if I can just stick needles through this, this but uh, I might punch some, a few guide holes to make sure that it looks a little bit more tidy on the back. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to tidy up 
uh, the ends of the zipper by just kind of cutting an angle on it on both sides. And since this is a synthetic tape, we're going to just take a lighter and lightly kiss the edges to melt that and make sure it doesn't come unraveled. And it's kind of fun. You can kind of sculpt it a little bit. Just be careful because the brass gets kind of hot and if your fingers aren't super calloused, um, you'll feel it. Now, big thing. We want to make sure we sew this back in the same way that we took it out. So our holes go like this. So what I am going to do is I'm going to take my Sharpie marker and I'm going to put a little dot, a little line where no one will ever be able to see it, but I know that that's the top of the wallet. That's where I want my zipper pull to start when the zipper is closed. I'm going to get my TEDS tape here. Uh, I don't know what size this is. This is very small TEDS tape, but it's just what we need because we're going to go in and I want to go after the stitch holes. Why? I don't know. It just feels like that's the right thing to do, so that's what I'm doing. And the TED's tape is nice because it has a little bit of fabric in it, so it not only will give you sticking power, but it just kind of reinforces this seam a little bit. Not that it needs it, and to be completely honest with you, all this leather is from Tandy. So this is what 14-year-old Tandy leather looks like when it's been used for 10 years and then put in a drawer for four years. Um, it may not be the best, but it's certainly not the worst. It does tend to age very yellow, and you can see I used to make pockets out of five ounce leather. I would not suggest doing that. That will snap your cards directly in half. Um, but if you were to want this to age red, more red, use some uh, liquid mink oil. This was treated with neat's foot oil. So when I tell people, when I say, I say a lot, um, if you want a more red tone to your patina, use mink oil. If you want a more yellow tone, use Neat's Foot. Uh, let me see here. This is Herman Oak leather, but you can see the difference. This is a much more red tone. This was treated with mink oil. This was treated with Neat's Foot oil. Um, this is also not the best quality. It's like Chilean. It's not bad, but it's not the best quality leather. So this is going to give you a much deeper, were we to be carried, this is our SD card wallet. Um, so we don't really carry it around, but were you to carry it around, it shines up nice and it gets nice and dark, nice deep chestnut color. For some reason, these Tandy hides, and they might have changed them by now, believe this is 14 years ago, so I'm not trying to trash talk Tandy, but um, back in the day, these, I think these were like South American hides, which is not necessarily a bad thing. They just aged to this kind of grayish yellow, and then after three or four years, they started to pick up more of those caramel colors, but since this was the inside of a wallet, I mean, that was the outside of a wallet, so that's as dark as it got in 10 years. Um, but still, nonetheless, it's a good quality wallet. It's nice and supple and soft, and uh, it's worth saving. Now, I do want to have a little extra sticking out. I want to look at the back and make sure that my holes are going to go through, and we do have a problem. We can see here that our holes are not going to go through, so we have to pull the zipper. I put it just a tad bit too low, but... I think this is the first time ever that I've had to do this. This is the reason I use this tape. Um, so that tells me to start at the bottom and work my way up instead. And then the side with the logo is the top. So I want to air on the side of the zipper being centered or being situated towards that side of the wallet. I'm going to go one side at a time. This side still likes to still likes to party on the bottom, so we're going to make sure it's on the top like that. That's a little too much. There we go. Now when we zip her up, I just like to check to see and make sure there's no wobbles. There's a little tiny wobble here, so all we're going to do is move that over a little bit. And once we fold it, you're not going to be able to see the wobbles, but I like to you might as well make it as good as you can while you're while you're at it. So, excuse the noise. I'm going to turn the mic away and hammer this down a little bit. OK, 
Okay, now we're going to flip this over and we see that all the holes, all the stitching holes, are covered by our zipper tape, which means that we're ready to stitch the zipper in. So I'm going to be using the, um, the wax braided main thread in white. It will match, it will look a little bit newer than the polyester thread that was used originally, but it's a close enough look that I think we should be okay. And the original one we started here and sewed around and had, I actually tied a knot which I have learned since not to do. But I'm still going to start right there. And I'm just going to sew around like you guys have seen me do hundreds of times in all the zippers that we install. So I texted my mom and she said she wants it put back just as it was. So we have two options here. We can sew this part in first and then fold this over and sew around the whole thing. Or we can sew around the whole thing, unzip this, and sew it in this way. I'm going to do that um, because this is a little bit of a pain, but I'm not a big fan of sewing around the whole thing. It's much easier to just sew this whole thing while it's out on its own. So what I've done is I'm using double stick tape instead of glue and I'm going to use some of these pins, these positioning needles, uh, so that I can get the holes lined up. And once we have that done, it should be pretty standard to just sew around that. And uh, then we can sew it back in the wall and we're going to be done. I wouldn't suggest doing it this way if you were doing a card bank, but with a nice wide open coin slot like this, coin pocket like this that's been used for 10 years, um, this tape will tear away and the coin pocket will be just as functional as it was before. And it also, again, it allows me, if I do screw up, to reposition it in a way that glue would not allow me to do. Um, I don't do a lot of repairs, so I'm not super good at lining things up. So these, these positioning works are, these positioning needles work, you pull the tab, the pin comes out. I think we can get away with two of them because I'm just going to kind of go down the line here and really just use this one part. I'm going to put it kind of one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. Put that in there and just go little by little and stick it down. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You could also do this with just regular needles as well if you don't have the position needles. But once we get the corners done, you can see light through it. And it's so old that I don't actually think I need to do that at all. I think that will get us. Let's check with some needles. Oh, that's a big fat needle. Let's check with some properly sized needles. Yeah, we're good. So, turns out that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So one quick little tidbit. These uh, LDH Midnight Scissors are back in stock on the Buckle Guy website. Uh, highly, highly suggest them. They're amazing. Um, but now what we're going to do is we're going to unzip this and we have our holes here and we have our holes here and all I have to do is it's a little bit of a pain in the butt but we're just going to sew these together. I called my mom. She doesn't want any extra rivet. She just wants it. If this was a normal uh, refurbish, I would redo the edges. I would shine them up and stuff. She wants this wallet looking the way that it was when, I handed, when she handed it to me except with a new zipper. So all I have to do is swear a little bit and... Uh, 
sew this back together the wrong way like I did when I was 19, 20 years old, and we are done with this repair. And mom has her old wallet with a new zipper that's good for another 20 years. With rivets, it's doable for sure. I'm not saying you don't, you can't do it, but it is a time savings up front. But once you've been in business for 15 years, like I hope all of you guys get to do as we've been lucky enough to be, things are gonna start coming back in for repairs. And we offer free repairs happily. Um, but this makes the job a little bit easier. I know this seems more time consuming, but if I had a rivet down in here to get this open and down there and drill it out without drilling holes through the, it'd be a nightmare. So um, this is usually, this is why I sewed all of my pockets in like this. However, these days you would sew like this to make a pocket in here. I just didn't know that was even a thing back when I made this wallet because there wasn't access to photos of how these wallets were made in Japan and that kind of stuff. Um, at least in depth like that. They did make magazines and stuff, but we, we had no way to get them. Um, so once I learned the right way to do it, it made a little more sense. And so here we go, just as mom wanted it. No extra burnishing on the edges, no nothing. Everything lines up back perfectly. Um, I got the zipper as straight as I could, admittedly. I'm not great at replacing uh, zippers when the leather's been super old, but it looks good enough. Um, works perfectly. It's gonna last a lot longer than that Joanne fabric zipper. Although I am absolutely in no way trash talking this plastic zipper that lasted 10 years. Um, my mom uses the coin case every day for her wallets. What I did do, I should have done before I sewed everything together. I noted my repair on the inside. I always do that in Sharpie markers. So it says new zipper, 324, 23 EH. So we'll keep our track, we'll keep track of our repairs in there. But I put it on the inside so when you open it, you don't see it. And um, that's one of the benefits of buying hand sewn products and repair it because the repairs are easy. It's the whole point of a saddle stitch was uh, they're field repairable. But it's also how um, exemplifies how you should design your waltz, right? The rivets, if I'd riveted these in, in the beginning, it would have been quicker, but if I had to repair them now, it would have taken a longer time. Um, the leather is good. The stitching looks doesn't look like anything even happened to it, uh, and that's because of the polyester. It's a little dirty, but after 10 years, it's not too bad. It doesn't really look like a repair at all. And... Uh